Darth Maul was a Zabraki male born in 54 BBY on either Iridonia or Dathomir, depending on your sources. He was discovered by the reigning Dark Lords Plagueis and Sidious as an infant and raised as a Sith assassin. His early life was marked by suffering and agony as his masters put him through some of the most painful training known to man. At a young age, Maul showed aptitude for the dark side and was a proficient Jedi hunter in his teenage years. In 32 BBY, he was sent to deal with the Naboo trade crisis, defeated and killed Qui-Gon Jinn, but met his fate at the hands of Obi-Wan Kenobi. He would later return during the Clone Wars and so on, but for our purposes, this is where the story ends today. Veridun was a human male born 3,701 years before the Battle of Yavin. At a young age, he showed a high potential for the Force, particularly the dark side. After he killed a servant in his adopted father's home, simply because he wanted to see if he could, he was sent to the Sith Academy and trained for the upcoming war with the Jedi. He was apprenticed to Lord Vindican and renamed Malgus. The two of them became the first Sith to cross swords with the Jedi in centuries. After Vindican was defeated by Master Kao Senderach, Malgus executed both of them and claimed the title of Dark Lord for himself. His career on the battlefield was a collection of successes and failures, having been defeated by future Grandmaster Satil Shan on Alderaan, but also captured the Jedi Temple on Coruscant. Near the end of his life, Malgus became disillusioned to the Sith Empire and attempted to take the title of Emperor for himself. Here he was finally taken down for good by a strike team of Jedi elite. As a Zabrak in the prime of his life, Maul was afforded much greater strength, dexterity, and durability than a human even capable of withstanding force lightning. His childhood consisted entirely of training and torture, being constantly hung upside down for hours, submerged in freezing water, and having to take down assassin droids on his own. At one point, Sidious left him on Mustafar to survive on his own, and he lasted more than a fortnight before he was rescued. While on an undercover mission in a secret gladiatorial prison, Maul was forced to battle the other prisoners with no weapons and still came out on top. He bested a Yuzhong Vong warrior and killed a steroid-pumped wampa with his bare hands by crushing its heart and bashing its skull in. Yes, Maul is a tank, nothing short of it. Malgus was 60 years old, past his physical prime, and suffered massive degradation by a lifetime serving the dark side. During a battle in Alderaan, he was buried alive under a mountain of rubble, which damaged his body and forced him to take reconstructive surgery. His jaw and lungs were reinforced by cybernetics, allowing him higher stamina, and his more metallic arms and legs were granted greater strength and reflex. Comparisons have been made to Darth Vader's Sith armor, but there are plenty of key differences. Malgus doesn't have the same defensive capability or the raw strength of Vader. His best feats are simply crushing bone, his head and limbs are exposed, and he doesn't have the constant painkillers fueling him 24-7. But he's also faster and far more agile, capable of acrobatics not often seen in Sith warriors. Plenty of people seem to be under the impression that simply having cybernetics makes you superior to the unenhanced, but honestly I see the two as being relatively close. Malgus is slightly more durable, surviving the avalanche even without his upgrades and still being able to fight off two Jedi before he could be treated. Maul very well could be stronger, having been able to break a Wampa's skull, and the speed goes about even, and the same can be said for agility. The deciding factor for me is age. Maul has about 40 years on his competition and is more likely to hold out in an endurance match. Thus, I give him the edge in a physical contest. Darth Maul had a lot of raw potential in the Force, but he was never truly trained in the more advanced techniques, such as Force Lightning. He used the Force very freely when he wanted to, but only ever treated it as a supplement to his physical abilities. 
He was capable with Force Push, Force Wave, Force Cloak, Telekinesis, Augmentation, had the occasional mind trick, but overall, nothing really big to show. Darth Malgus already had a powerful connection to the dark side, but the death of his wife at his own hands fueled his rage and made him even stronger. His force pushes and telekinesis were advanced, landing hits on high Jedi Council members like Zalo. He was capable of force lightning and was described as burning the flesh of his targets on occasion. He also showed capability with his force sense, being able to break the force cloak of a Jedi on Alderaan and sense the trap being laid out for him. He also showed a bit of precognition in combat, being able to dodge a hit from a blade he didn't even know was there in his fight with Arryn Lanier. Yep, you know what I'm gonna say. I don't think Maul was nearly as bad as others say, but the edge still goes to Darth Malgus. Maul was one of the most renowned swordsmen of his day, and most of that came from his training outside of the lightsaber. Maul was trained at an academy for assassins and trained specifically to be a bodyguard. Here he learned Terrace Kazi, a martial art specifically created for the non-Force sensitives to resist the power of the Force and take Jedi and Sith on in simple combat. Put that in the hands of a Sith like Maul and you have a dangerous combination. For his lightsaber combat, Maul mainly studied in Juyo. The seventh form of lightsaber combat, Juyo was banned from the Jedi Order for bringing users too close to the dark side, but was perfect for the aggression of a Sith. The idea was for the user to send out a brutal assault of wild, unpredictable hacks and slashes to overwhelm the enemy quickly. However, Maul used this form for what I refer to as measured brutality. It seemed wild and insane, but behind it there was a logical approach looking to pick apart his enemy's strengths and weaknesses. Maul was a tactician leading his enemies on and outsmarting him. In his first round with Ciolo or Manka, the Jedi Master proved too fast and drove him into retreat. So when Maul returned for the second round, he feigned incapability, allowed Ciolo into thinking he was beaten, and then got a quick impalement in with the other end of his saber staff. Remember, this is Maul as a teenager, outsmarting one of the best masters in the era. In his challenge against both Kamari Vosa and Anun Vandara, he was described as being relentless and dominating the competition. Vandara, a Jedi Battlemaster, decided he was outmatched and the only way to kill Maul would be to sacrifice himself in an explosion. Some people take trouble with Maul going so even against Qui-Gon Jinn, who does have sort of a bad reputation in the Versus community. And also his slice and dice from Kenobi, but that's the obvious one. Uh, for the first part, I say that this is more of a good showing for Qui-Gon than it is a bad one for Maul. Jin is incredibly underrated by the fandom, and the fact that he lasted so long and even impressed Maul with his strength and skill is a testament. As for Padawan Kenobi, well this is a mix of both plot convenience and Maul's overwhelming arrogance. However, when Maul gets serious and buckles down, there are few who can stop him. Darth Malgus' style is never confirmed anywhere in Star Wars lore, but the YouTube community seems to have come to a general consensus that his style is rooted in Form 5 Gemso, and I'm inclined to agree. Gemso was all about redirection and offense, turning your enemies' attacks against them and sending your own back at them. Best defense is a good offense and all that. Throughout his life, you can see him rely less and less on brawler-style tactics and more on intelligence. In his first battle with Satil Shan and Kao Senderach, he appeared to use more of a brute force tactic, steamrolling both of them with an aggressive onslaught. His second battle with Shan had a more controlled approach, but still used that same method. In his duel with Ben Zalo, on the other hand, he showed much more focus and cunning. He opened with a heavy-handed assault, but when he realized he was more or less evenly matched with the Jedi Master, he used cunning to outsmart Zalo and get a precision kill in. Of course, one thing has always plagued Darth Malgus, and that's his tunnel vision. Hindsight is always 20, but this guy's made some very serious mistakes because of his lack of foresight. Still, Malgus was one of the most respected Jedi killers of his day, and it did take a strike team to bring him down. I'll admit, I'm a bit more critical of Malgus than many others, and think he's propped up a little bit too high in many discussion threads, but I do see him and Maul as being on a relatively similar playing field. Saber to Saber, I think Malgus is more skilled but Maul is the smarter of the two and has plenty of experience taking down opponents 
better than him. Personally, I would compare these two to a Kenobi Vader or Revan Malak scenario. Malgus is like Darth Malak or the pre Vader, holding the edge in raw skill and swordsmanship, but Maul is like Obi-Wan and Revan, a smarter fighter who knows how to use that to his advantage. The real question should be whether Maul will underestimate his opponent, or Malgus will leave himself open. But looking at Maul's history, he really only had that overconfidence when he was against someone he considered small potatoes, like Padawans and such. When he considered his opponent an equal, he gave them nothing short of full respect, a great example being his longing to challenge Plo Koon to test his own skill. Ultimately, I see the ball falling in Malgus's court to avoid coming up short. Thus, I give Maul the edge for lightsaber combat. The advantage to the victor goes 7 to 10. Malgus would charge first, and begin hammering away at Maul immediately. Maul would respond in kind, all the while analyzing his opponent and keeping his staff hidden. It would be very equal for a time, until both realized they weren't getting anywhere. This is when Malgus draws on the force and sends Maul flying with a push, maybe even sending some force lightning, burning Maul, and then aiming for a downward strike. This is the moment Maul reveals his second blade, hoping to get a surprise fatality. Malgus sees it coming and sidesteps the blow. Recognizing the weakness of the staff, Malgus will adjust his technique accordingly and try to aim for the hilt. Maul is able to hold him off in this regard for several minutes, but ultimately gets his blade halved. However, unlike Shan, Maul had the scenario in mind when he made his. He simply picks up the half and continues fighting. Malgus, who was probably expecting that to be the end of the battle, is completely thrown off, but keeps going. Malgus feigns a weak point, hoping to lure Maul in for a quick kill. But Maul is smarter than this, and only pretends to be lured in. When Maul goes for the staff, Maul counters and sends his second blade through Malgus's heart. I declare Darth Maul, the Sith Assassin, the victor. He was capable with Force Push, Force Wave, Force Cloak, Telekinesis, Augmentation, had the occasional mind trick, but overall... <coughs> Bless me. Thank you, me.